Colt. I'm Colt. I just want to introduce myself. How are you? <laughs> Tucked away in the Carolina Sandhills is one of America's earliest golf towns. It has had over 120 years of experience in building golf courses. Southern Pines would be a great introduction for people of Ross's 19 teens and 20s style. And hosting the world travelers who play them. In our journey to Pinehurst, we spend the week paying respect to the champions, pioneers, and legends of the game while exploring parts of town with today's community leaders. That relationship between writers and golfers is hard to explain. Who are helping to shepherd the game for the next 120 years. There's something special about this game that just it brings us together, the camaraderie piece, the competition. I mean, that's what the VJ is all about. I got to do a little shepherding of my own. Come here, my children. Come to Come Papa. Here. But quickly became the one needing direction. Sit. I give you a foot and a half, you give me a couple feet extra, it's okay. We got a tough crowd out here today. We witnessed the excavation of long lost ideas, tasted the local flavors. I grew up in Honolulu. Yeah. I now live on the coast in California. Yeah. This stacks up. Yeah. It stacks up, it's really good. And stopped in for story time, which seemed fitting. They say that the smaller the ball, the better the literature. All in and around the sandy hills of North Carolina. <laughs> How's the audio, Alex? This is my journey to Pinehurst. Just a short 80 minute drive or less from Raleigh, we start our trip in the neighboring town of Southern Pines. This is Kyle Franz, a golf course architect, builder, and historian. Out of high school, he became a hired hand for Tom Doak from Bandon to Barn Boogle. Today, we meet him here at Southern Pines Golf Club, his latest project. But his journey here began as most do in the area over at Piners Number 2, helping to restore the Donald Ross original with Bill Corr and Ben Crenshaw. When we worked on the restoration of Piners Number 2, I realized very quickly that something about the styling of it I really loved. I've always loved Ross's architecture, obviously. Donald Ross grew up at Royal Dornick in Scotland, apprenticed under old Tom Morris, and started his prolific golf course architecture career right here at Pinehurst. Even if you don't know him by name, you've most likely played one of his holes. Ross designed over 400 golf courses in North America alone. Pioneers became his home, and the town is now known as the home of American golf thanks to his impact. Where does Southern Pines fit in? I think everything that he did here was really special to him. I mean, there's a reason why he lived here for as long as he did. It became this place where people could come and, and, and study really great architecture and do so in a, kind of a, a little different offbeat format. As architects, we always love to have something that's a little bit different from anywhere else. And I think he realized here, he had the opportunity to do something really, really unique. We had some information on what Ross had built originally. I've seen a bunch of photos of Piners Number 2 when it very first opened, and the greens were really wild. It'll make your jaw drop how much contour you had in the green originally. The green complexes are the most severe of any of the golf course work that we've done around the region the last 15 or so years. We kept a lot of the big tiers that were prominent around each green complex. I've always wanted to do that on one of these golf courses, and this became the place for it. You know, just make them as fun and wild as uh, he originally had on Piners Number 2. So how did Kyle make his way from Pinehurst to the friendly, neighboring town of Southern Pines? Well, Kelly Miller, of course, an elite amateur player, community leader, and son-in-law of LPGA legend Peggy Kirkbell, who purchased Pine Needles Lodge and Golf Club back in 1953. Kelly Miller is now the president and CEO of Pine Needles, and has added Mid Pines and Southern Pines to the portfolio. And when the Donald Ross Originals needed an update for the 21st century, Kelly took a chance on Kyle Franz. I met Kyle at a cocktail party for the Outpost Club. He said, if you're ever going to do anything over there at Mid Pines, I'd love for you to give me a holler. A couple years later, I got a call from Kyle, and he said, hey, will you walk the golf course with me? I give credit to Kyle. He had done his homework. If you've seen the Ross's drawings, you know, on the graph paper and the yard increments, Kyle had done all 18 holes. He had even photoshopped some, some holes. I was mesmerized. By the time I got done with him, I said, well, what do you charge? 
Pine Needles, we just having had the most recent U.S. Women's Open, probably gets the bulk of the notoriety and the other two courses here, Mid Pines and, and Southern Pines, are really fantastic. We're so fortunate to have three original Donald Ross golf courses. Southern Pines has always had kind of a cult-like following. It was always just, oh man, if they could just do this or just do that. Hopefully we've done the ifs. Based on the response, it's been very positive. Routing for Southern Pines, a place down across this big valley that runs all the way from the north end to the south and goes into the big ponds that are at the southern end of the property. That's really where this property separates itself, I think, from all the other great old ones. It has just this beautiful run of meadows and lakes through the center. I'm just gonna aim at the front right there and just try and skip it on down. This is kind of how Ross's game was designed to play. Oh yeah, that was so, yeah, solid. That's old school architecture there for you. That's why they love to build with false fronts. It's funny because nowadays you'd think the false fronts means, oh, you gotta fly it back, you know, mm -hmm. and attack it from behind. Yep. Which is also hard and you can easily spin it off the front. You're saying false front pins up, you actually wanna drive it up. Yeah, absolutely. Get, get it skipping up that thing. <laughs> but we'll play, like you said, a little, little 1934 style. Yeah. Look at this guy. Oh, 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 oh over oh. might be dead. Next up, we have the Lost Hole. It's an alternate golf hole that you can play out here. What Ross had, since the routing goes in a big, huge loop, is he had this extra alternate hole so that you could play four out on the first four holes of the golf course, then play this par three, and then play the last four in. France put the Lost Hole back into play to create a shorter, alternate routing that many locals play in the late evenings. There's only one catch, the green, is made of sand. Isn't that something that happened a lot in the early days of, of at least American golf where there was like sand and oiled greens? Mm-hmm, especially here in Piners. And originally the greens in Piners were sand, not having figured out how to do grass greens yet in the Carolinas. It's about a 90, 100 yarder as I recall. All right, well I've got one club in my rental set here that goes the distance, the 56. Good action. Big bounce. Look at this. Get back there. Good shot. Take it, thank you. Now, this is what early Piners looked like right here. Putting off the sand green. Reading the sands. Feeling a little break to the right here. Come on, baby. Oh! Yes. Ooh. Ooh! Sand green wins on my first go around. <laughs> this hole looks wild. Yes, yes, this is the, uh, the showstopper here. Our hole in one par four, number 11. My good friend and mentor, uh, Dan Proctor, he worked on number two with us and he's like, you gotta go see the Southern Pines golf course. So I came over here and I thought that this property especially would be a great introduction for people of Ross's 19 teens and 20s style. He was almost the exact same age that I was when we started this project. So he was a younger architect and it showed in the, in the work. It's, it was a bold, unique style, his original style here. So that's why I really felt like that was the way to go here. So we really tried to draft off of Ross's younger work and, and show off a little bit different uh, piece of it. And everybody has really loved it. And the only people that have ever questioned anything, I was like, oh man, that's really bold out there. That's exactly what I want to hear. So keep them coming. One of the things we try to do with this hole is have a bunch of features out in the place where everybody was going to try and lay up and really make it to where it's very encouraging to go towards the green. You said drivable. You drivable, said ace is yes. a possibility. Let's go down and play it from the next tee down there with this southeast wind. Let's see if we can't, uh, we can't get a hole in one on tape. Give ourselves a chance at least. Caught it toey, it's the right line, but it's got potential. It's gotta go. And I feel like it's right in that trap we were talking about. <laughs> find out. Safe. Alright, safe. We'll we'll get in one with the seven iron shot from up there. You gotta admit, it's hard to keep a golf course the same over a hundred years. Of course it's gonna change. The environment starts growing over, the sand starts building up on the sides and the greens start getting raised or lowered. So much can happen in a hundred years that you actually need to change it. Things get changed, you know, you have a bad summer, a section of green dies, so they abandon that section, all kinds of things happen. Hundred years is a long time. So, a really fun shot. What we did is we left this whole embankment up on the left hand side to where I can skip down. If I really get the right run on it, it'll go right down to the hole. Oh, now you're dialed. There we go. Look at this. Get up. Woo! All right, knock her in. 
Hey. There she is. Woo. Appreciate it's it. Tough. That hole gets a little harder the closer you get. Yes, indeed. Yeah, it's sneakily very steep grain. If Mr. Ross rocked up to the club today, what do you think he'd say? I think he'd be stunned at how far these guys are hitting the golf ball these days, but I think he would really enjoy and appreciate the meticulousness that we try to restore his work. After getting the chance to appreciate the work of Kyle and his crew at Southern Pines, we washed it all down with some local brew at nearby Southern Pines Brewing Company. Founded by veterans of the Airborne Special Forces who are headquartered at nearby Fort Bragg. Cheers. Cheers. The brewery is a solid spot if you like good people and ice cold beverages. I'm the CEO co-founder. It was started by myself and two other friends that we were all in the military together. The idea of doing something entrepreneurial we thought would be fun and beer was just that catalyst we needed to, to jump out of the military into doing something like this. Did this start off in a bathtub? Because I feel like a lot of, a lot of uh, <laughs> brewing companies do. We started brewing in my garage. We would brew about four or five nights a week in my house. We spent a year working on our Duck Hook Blondale and our Manila IPA, which are our two biggest sellers. Does this still count as double fisting? Southern Pines is this awesome place of small local businesses, entrepreneurs, and a real big military community that just call this place home and enjoy it. How is beer made? How is beer made? I've seen it in a bathtub once. I, I have <laughs> brewed with my cousin at a young age, I must admit. Enjoyed it. But how is beer actually made? So we uh, mix grain in our mash tun over here, move it into the brew kettle, boil it, and then we put it into the whirlpool where we spin it out, helps clarify it and put it in a fermenter to ferment. A lot of batches are in there, about nine to 14 days. Filter it, put it into a tank to carbonate it, and then we can it or keg it. Washington, Oregon is where in the U.S. almost all the hops are grown. When it gets dried and pelletized, a great way to kind of sample them is to uh, take them in your hand. If you're trying to expose all that stuff inside and warm up the oils, and you can start to smell and bring out <laughs> Like just aroma in there. Holy and it's it's a really fun way to be able to sample and just you know pull out the different aroma in there. Unreal. I don't even need to drink a beer now. I can just come home and just be like, just get a little hit of this. I'm yeah. good. Rooted in the community. What does that mean exactly? We wanted to represent our town and be a place our town could be so proud of. The name Southern Pines also just sounds like pine trees in the south. A lot of people even in North Carolina don't associate it with a town and so it, it really worked neat from that standpoint. As we thought about what was most important to us and why we were starting a brewery, it was the community aspect of what breweries were, the places where people join and you get together and have a beer. So when we came up with the slogan, Root in the Community, we really wanted that to be the focus of what we are and what we do. It's about creating and fostering community. I always like to say you could spell Southern Pines Brewing Company, Southern Pines apostrophe Brewing Company, because the town has really taken possession of us. We're like the town's brewery. Welcome to the cradle of American golf. On the next episode of Journeys. If you got 10 acres, nine holes, par threes, probably gonna be the most fun you've ever had on a golf course. We accept Tom Pashley's challenge and get to spread the good vibes while playing one of the GOAT courses in golf. I love being out on a golf course. I feel at peace. If I can bring that feeling to other women, it makes me happy. 